Hey folks, it's Napalm Dawn here on G4G and I'm going to be going through a little bit of a surprise game to cover on this channel as I've only thrown one video its way way back when the game came out and then really haven't covered it since then and that's Warcraft Rumble. So the reason why I hadn't covered Warcraft Rumble that much is because of the fact that um, when I, I covered the game originally it was brand new it first come out um it was still a very new game for me to experience i'd never done one that was similar to this one i, I think maybe some people said clash of clans is, is kind of similar um it's not exactly a tower defense game it's more like a tower offense game you're not really like setting up your defenses around the map you're just kind of plowing through what the map has and when I did the video, one of the things that stuck out is that uh, there was a comment that, hey, I like this game at first. I'm now abandoning it. There's a, you really don't get gold in it uh, unless you start spending. And, and that comment sort of infected me a little bit. Uh, I was infected by the thought that okay this is going to be a cash grab game you know as as much as i go back within the world of warcraft universe to 2004 uh and even earlier than the game launch i was part of the beta for world of warcraft back in the day um and then played very very close to day one my guilds charter is uh january of 2005 um you know I even have that statue that they sent out. I think it was at the five-year mark. It was somewhere in Wrath of the Lich King where Blizzard sent out statues to people who had never dropped a monthly payment since the beginning of the game. And I like I open, uh, you know, I open my door one day and I have a package and it's from Blizzard. And I'm like, what the holy hell? I open it and it's that uh, Chromash statue. And it's, it's actually really nice. That blizzard is, is long gone. It, that blizzard is, is very much dead. And now, of course, we have the 1900 people layoff after the merger with Microsoft. But um, at least Bobby Kotick, the, the shit weasel, is out of there. Anyway, Hearthstone, World of Warcraft, the Warcraft RTSs, uh, Warcraft Rumble, they're all part of a universe for a game... That has been a major part of my gaming career, uh, you know, for since 2005, and even before that with the RTSs. You know, Warcraft One dates back to college-ish, maybe slightly post-college. So it's it's a company and it's a game series that I've traveled a very long road with. So when Rumble came out, I tried it, and Reading that comment and knowing how Blizzard is, I really did allow that comment to get into my brain. And I really definitely believed it, and it kind of soured me on the game for a while. Well, somewhere along the line, after just occasionally popping my head in and playing a little bit, the game started to break open for me. And one of the first things that happened is I pulled General Dracosith. When I pulled General Jackasith and I saw his passive of nearby enemies take 50% more elemental damage, I was like, okay, that is a really plainly obvious thing. I can build an elemental team around that. I have tons of elemental people. I have the shaman. I have the safe pilot. Uh, I would get the, the fire elemental tank. I had the blizzard. I had the drake, which is one of my most favorite units. Uh, the flame walker. And, uh, you know, I just basically went through my roster and was like, okay, you know, like, what is, what is elemental? This is a really obvious thing that I can do. And that is what started to kind of break the game open for me a little bit. I was like, okay, this is really obvious synergy. This is really easy to build around. Unlike Tyrion, who, uh, you know, Tyrion's passive is just that he heals people. I was like, oh, okay, that's, that's cool. Uh, put him, like, 
would stick him behind a tank and let the tank take everything. I was like, this is like playing World of Warcraft. But General Dracosith and his passive really started making me enjoy the game a little bit more. And then things started to happen with the game. I noticed the quest system where you can go and start getting experience targeted at a specific unit. If you just got a unit off the grid and you think you really like it and it shows up here in the quest, you're like, oh, I can level this unit up quick or I can continue to top off one of the units that I really like, like the Amelia Air Amelia Gnome Heart over here, the safe pilot. So the quests really started to get me into it too, aside from the team I built. But there was still that little needling going on in my brain of you're not really going to be able to get gold without paying for it. And then these surges started and I went, wait a minute. This is 200 gold right here. This is five missions of 40 gold a pop. And there's two surges going on. OK, so it's 400 gold a pop. And I'm looking at the grid and I'm like, um, things are in the 90s, but I have an income of 400 if I commit to it. And I was like, OK, this really isn't so bad. Was that comment wrong? Did this maybe get added afterwards? Maybe there was a big enough community outcry that they added this to the game because people are like, uh, hey, can I get some gold without paying for it? So Warcraft Rumble started to pick up some more and more steam with me. And I went looking for how do I unlock Emperor Thalrissian? And I came across this site that had a tier list, this NOFF.GG. And I looked at the S tier and the A tier. I was like, wait a minute, I have Tyrion. I have the safe pilot. I have the Griffin Rider. And down here in the A tier, I was like, Okay, I think I have the Dark Spear Trolls. I see the Stone Hoof Torrens a lot. I have the Drake. I have the Frostwolf Shaman. I see the Pyromancers a lot. Oh, I have Blizzard. And I was like, wow, I'm actually doing really well in the S and A tiers over here. And then I look at B. I'm like, okay, there's my Flame Walker. And I went getting the Fire Elemental. I was like, okay, I got the Fire Elemental. And then a weird phenomenon happened. You know how sometimes you're talking to somebody in your house and you mention something you like and the next thing you do, like YouTube is giving you ads for it or Facebook or Twitter or something like that. The next thing I knew, my grid was throwing a lot of the A and the S tier people at me. And I was like, I've got a lot of gold. I'm going to get them. So the next thing I know, Cairn shows up as a leader choice. Because when you do these quests, you get these tomes, but sometimes you'll get one that up, uh, updates your arc energy. And sometimes you get a leader tome where you can pick from one of two leaders. And I saw that I was like, OK, and I pushed and Karen was one of my choices of like, OK, he's a high ranking leader. And Rend was up there and I get Rend and then I get Gromash. And I'm like, wow, I've got almost all of the best leaders. And then the next thing I know, the day after I say that, Baron Rivendare shows up in the grid. I was like, OK, there is not a doubt in my brain that I'm getting him because he was up there in a nest here. So now I have Baron, Rend, Tyrion, Cairn, Gromash and General Draxith down here. I was like, what the hell just happened? I just, the game just sort of broke open for me. And I looked at the leaders and they give builds and everything and some team ups. And, you know, here's the Frostwolf Shaman. Here's the Flame Walker. It's like, OK, you know, I've, I've got that. There's the the safe pilot, the Shaman. And I was like, wow, I'm, I'm actually hitting my paces a lot here. And now this has become pretty much a daily play for me. The only thing that's tough about it is that it occupies with me the same gaming slot 
as Marvel Snap. That gaming slot of when you want to do something quick, you've got your phone with you, like um, say I'm out with a girlfriend and she runs into a store that I'm not particularly interested in. And I'm just, all right, I'll just sit here in the car and wait. Snap used to be one of the go-to games for that moment. Uh, back uh, when I was working and sometimes would uh, be bored at lunch, play a couple Snap games while I'm sitting there at lunch. Warcraft Rumble fights for that same spot because it's not a long drawn out game like Hearthstone or something like that. It's a quickie just like Marvel Snap. Um, so that's the only rough thing about it is it can occupy the same spot as another game that I have, but I am definitely now very much drawn to this game in a way that I hadn't been before. And I have gotten over that comment of, well, I've left the game because you can't get gold anymore without paying. It, I think the comment was like the gold dries up past a certain point. Maybe I'm not at that point, but seeing these surges happening and the fact that I'm able to spend gold to get these A and S tier items. And I'm like, oh, I definitely want to get those. They're on my list and then be able to make the money right back is definitely kind of crazy. And in terms of the gameplay, I really like the team that I've built and they really seem to get it done. The way the quest system works is that a lot of things that you do in the game, including quests, including the surges, build up that three bar daily meter that you saw there. And when it fills up, you get the, the leftmost listed tome over there. And to see things like leader tomes or um, arc light tomes over there, um, it is really nice to be able to get those. I mean, that leader pick tone that I got at K, okay, uh, blue stacks just seem to disappear <laughs> over there. Not too sure why blue stacks crash. So hold on a second and I will be right back. So we're back after that, uh, weird little crash over there. Believe it or not, the game did, uh, resume itself, which was pretty cool. So you see there what it's kind of like to go through one of the rotating unit experience quests. And when we come out of it, you could see there that I got some general experience on a character um, just from being in combat. It went to my flame walker. And once we get out of combat and we get back to the map, we can see here that Gromash gets a boost of experience. And I have a pip in the quest system over here. Now, once I get three, the Modest Tome will open up, and then another three, the Modest Undead Tome, and then I get the Major Tome over here. That one day that I saw the Leader Choice over there, I, like, I flipped out. Um, and then it, it giving me Cairn really made my day on that one. So this is my current favorite team. This is a Elemental-based team because Dracosith. Uh, says that nearby enemies take 50% more elemental damage. Unfortunately, I don't have uh, the best passive. According to the tier list over here, the best passive for him at 86% is Chromatic Scales, which gives the resistant trait. I wound up with the one of uh, Lasting Legacy, but there is, you know, obviously still the chance that I'll be able to get chromatic scales and I'll put that in but really to look at my roster and see just how much of the high powered ones on the tier list and again the tier list is subjective uh, and I haven't looked at too many other sites to see if they have similar lists but you know I felt accomplished to look at my roster and see uh, you know, so many high ranking runs, ones there. And then with the surges, now the surges are a little bit different. They force you into a certain set of units that you may or may not have. Here you can see 
if I were to do one of these missions, I would be forced into using either, uh, not either, both Black Rock and Undead units. One thing that I actually disagreed with on this tier list is that I had a Beast Undead Surge and it forced Troga onto me. Now, whenever I deployed Troga, uh, I found that she kicked ass. I, the, she's the only, at least as far as I know, the only thing that deals this percentage damage and she has a beam attack, sort of like a a warlock's life drain or a drain soul. And I, this beam seemed to do a bucket of damage. But she is listed as being, you know, dumpster tier. D tier, like trash tier down here. And I was a little surprised at that because when I came out of those missions and I did all of the surges on that, uh, she had really grown on me. And I said to myself, I was like, I, I want to get that unit if I see it, um, because it, it, it seemed to do so well, <laughs> but she's dumpster tier. So, uh, maybe not, but, um, yeah, the, the surges basically can occur anywhere, sort of like how a rift might show up outside in an RPG or something, or like a, a you know, a zone coming under attack. So it gets dark. Or like when Deathwing used to be attacking his own and Cataclysm, he might come by and breathe. <laughs> it's, it's the same map. So, these are just so handy for gold. You just have to get used to, uh, you know, a, a different set of units. And it looks like I'm probably going to have Baron Rivendare with me because my, it seems like my buildings are um, deploying skeletons. Yep, there he is, Baron Rivendare. Uh, he's considered an S-tier leader, so this could work uh, pretty well. I've got some Unbound units, which is uh, ones that I could drop anywhere. Thalnos is not that good. He, I think he's the one that powers up depending on how many spells you cast, and I'm sure I'm probably not going to see too many spells. However, I have a Ren and Drake combo here, which could be handy. Because the Drake is a flyer and Ren um, powers up your flyers when he's on the field, but I'm a little bit on the back foot here. Oh, that's right, he makes them cheaper. So we're going to go assault this tower, see how this works. Uh, we're going to send a miner over here. Rend, Rend got his ass kicked. But we've taken the tower. Not a lot of spells going on over here. However, um, got some good unbounds. Keep that close to face. Keep the pressure on him with another unbound set of skeletons. Probably. All right, good. Got some credits up here. I will say these these surge ones can get hectic because they knock you off your game a little bit when you're forced to use units that maybe you're not that familiar with. But it looks like we've got it over here. I wouldn't mind. I like having a safe pilot or a spell when bosses get that low to just kind of finish them off. I almost feel like it's a cheat that you can drop unbound units on a boss and uh, have them win the game, even if you don't even have an, a unit around them. But hey, um, that's the game. It's a viable tactic. And there you go. There's there's 40 gold in the bank. And, you know, three of these 
will put you ahead of any standard purchase you know relatively standard purchase here on uh the grid when i get my grids refreshed i actually like to consult the tier list now to see uh you know where things rank uh huntress is here in a huntress is over here in my uh tier list looks like execute harpy the meat wagon the dinos I would think the meat wagon has some value because it can siege uh, outside of a tower's range. And here it is at a B tier, so that's, that's actually not too bad. Um, and, you know, people upload builds and everything like this here. Uh, meat wagons outranging legendary bosses and everything. So th this site has been handy. And I feel like it has increased my enjoyment of the game and added some extra value to it. So, Warcraft Rumble, give it a try. If you stepped away from it in the beginning and thought maybe it was going to be a little too money hungry, which, hey, you know, it's sad to say, but it's Blizzard. I wouldn't blame you if you thought that. But maybe if the surges were never in the game at the start, uh, maybe they listened to player feedback and added it. But if it was always here, uh, you know, just keep grinding until you unlock these surges. And uh, I think it will fix the currency issue. And I'm about ready to get a troop choice. And then a little after that, the dungeons unlock for me. And I've heard from several people, including some really good friends, that dungeons are quite a lot of fun. I don't PvP yet. I don't quite have the confidence to think that I would do well in PvP. However, my Dracosith Elemental team, I may start throwing it in some beginner PvP and see what happens. But yeah, Warcraft Rumble, a lot of fun. It has crept in there to be a daily game for me. Although, while being out and about, it does unfortunately occupy the same slot as Marvel Snap. I do find myself having having to make the decision whether I want to do a quick rumble or a quick snap. And that's kind of tough. But other than that, yeah, Warcraft Rumble. Enjoying it. Would recommend it. And uh, honestly, you know, give it a chance. It seems the economy is, is relatively fair at this point in time. So hope you guys like the video and I will catch you next time.